so I am now the official ring leader. <laughs> Thank you for my shirt. Um, the bells are going to play a prelude. If you want to follow the words, it's actually um, in the hymnal, but we're not going to sing it. Um, it's just, it's on page 249. It's called, There's a Song in the Air. We don't sing it a lot, so if you want to see the words as we play, we're going to do it two times through. Um, it is Pastor Scott's birthday, so if you will join us, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Pastor Scott, happy birthday to you. It was actually Grace and peace to you in the name of God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in whose spirit we worship this morning, the Lord be with you. Thank you for those of you who did sing me a happy birthday. It, is, it was yesterday, just to clear up any misconceptions. I'm not bothered. It's the first Sunday since my birthday. Very kind of you. Not everybody else gets noticed, so I'm a little embarrassed by that. But uh, thanks so much. And we enjoy the, the prelude this morning for the, the Hilltop Ringers and the wonderful job they've done, especially throughout this season. This morning... If you were here with us last week, you would remember I had said something about the service today being very different, and it is. It begins differently even. So we're going to begin a very different understanding because we're doing a Wesleyan Covenant Renewal service. I'll talk more about that as we go, but the way it begins actually is by litany, which is word and response. There'll be plenty of, of music and word and response in today's service. We are in the Christmas season. We celebrated a lot of Advent prior to Christmas Day, having no real Christmas songs, um, in that time, Christmas hymns. And so today, since we're in the Christmas season, we'll be singing a lot of Christmas hymns and a lot of litany, a lot of word and response. And it begins with this. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Yet now we are in a season where we remember that you are pleased to dwell with us. We're humbled by your love, which pursues us from the heights of heaven to the depths of the earth especially as it comes from you, the one true God who reigns forever. Amen. 
So let us begin this day by standing and joining with all heaven and singing praises and offering worship to our God and King, who is now born to us in the innocence of infancy. Would you stand with me as we sing Angels from the Realms of Glory? If you remain standing, we'll have our scriptural call to worship this morning, coming from Psalm 50. This will be offered by our liturgist, Greg Ehlers. The Lord, the Mighty One, is God, and He has spoken. He has summoned all humanity from where the sun rises to where it sets. Our God approaches, and He is not silent. Fire devours everything in his way, and a great storm rages around him. Bring my faithful people to me, those who made a covenant with me by giving sacrifices. O my people, listen as I speak. I am God, your God. Then call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. You may be seated. As I said, today's service will be a little bit different. Normally I've already done the announcements, but at this point in time we're going to take a look at some of the announcements in the life of the church. And first, welcome to worship. For those of you who are worshiping online as well as in-house, welcome to Zion Methodist Church of Gordonville. And I'm the birthday pastor, Scott Griffin, delighted to be in worship with you and to be celebrated among you, um, by you. It's always a delight for me to be in worship. Whether you're in-house or online, always at my delight to worship with you. After you fill out your welcome to worship card, which will be collected by the, uh, the ushers a little bit later in the service, as well as checking in online. Um, There's also another announcement in there, another uh, insert in the bulletin, and you can take that with you as you go from the service this day. It's actually, there's supposed to be one available for everyone, so if you'd like to to have one and don't have one, we can pilfer through other other bulletins until you get one. It's for you to take with you. I'll be referencing that later in the service. As far as other announcements in the life of the church go, we have an altar rail offering coming up in January. Next Sunday will be the first Sunday in the month when we have communion, and when we do, we do an altar rail offering. That will go to the Mississippi Valley Therapeutic Horsemanship um, Foundation or, or nonprofit, or uh, however they qualify themselves. It's a, there's a lot there. It's often referred to as the MVTH. It uh, is a foundation assisting those with various needs uh, with equine assisted services. There's more about that in the newsletter. There's an article about it. Our own Darla Mangles uh, volunteers out there, and my guess is that's how we found out about it and are interested in, in uh, funding that uh, opportunity to benefit people in our local area. It's a neat way for people to, to get help that maybe can't happen any other way. And so they benefit all, peop- all kinds of people with various needs, and that's where our altar rail offering will go for the month of January. 
We have a new confirmation class starting next Sunday. That'll begin at 915 in the Bridge classroom that's over in God's workshop. If you walk in and up the stairs, you'll head to the right. It's the last room on the left, and I'll meet the, the future confirmands there. And uh, I'm expecting a class of 10 or so, but I've only heard from one via email, two others beyond the email, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe three will be there. Actually, I'm thinking it's a very busy season of the year, and we'll have almost everybody that I'm anticipating will be there. But if you haven't and you'd like to let me know that your child is going to be participating, uh, do, do go ahead and let me know that so I can be best prepared. But we're looking forward to that, uh, another confirmation class in the life of Zion. It's an exciting time. There's going to be a men's breakfast two Saturdays from today, uh, January 13th at 8 a.m. We took off uh, the month of December. We'll be back at it again, and maybe we have as, twice as many people as normal, because we're doing it after one month off. Who knows? Looking forward to whoever can visit with us January 13th at 8 a.m. And then uh, the Keeley family has an announcement for us. They're inviting all of us to the fellowship hall two Sundays from now, two weeks from now, to celebrate Don Keeley's 90th birthday. Reverend Don will be 90, and we want to celebrate it together as a, as a church family. That'll be from 1230 to 230 down in the fellowship hall on Sunday, January 14th. There's other announcements in your bulletin. There's a newsletter out that's available. Please take advantage of all the opportunities to, uh, to know what's going on in the life of Zion. Too much uh, to be excited about to miss out on anything. As I said earlier, this is a Wesleyan Covenant Renewal Service Day, so it'll be a little different. So hang in there, buckle up, be prepared to read the screen. It'll be a good morning of us understanding more of the history of our faith and where we come from. Dearly loved brothers and sisters, the Christian life is the life found in Christ, redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. We are those who have entered into this life and have admitted into, been admitted into the new covenant of Jesus Christ. He is the mediator of this covenant. He sealed it with his own blood so it would last forever. On one side of this covenant stands God who promises to give us new life in Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. Every day, God proves his goodness and grace to us, showing us that his promise still stands firm. On the other side, we stand as those who promise to no longer live for ourselves, but instead live only for Jesus Christ, because he has loved us and has given his life for us. There are times in our lives when it's important for us to remember and reaffirm our promises in vows. In 1775, John Wesley introduced a covenant service into the Methodist societies as a way of reaffirmation. The renewal service was a time for the Methodists to gather annually in a time of self-examination, reflection, and dedication, wholly giving up themselves and renewing their covenant with their God. Repentance through confession and commitment was a key focus in the service, demanding humility from those who willingly would submit themselves to the dynamic words stated within the liturgy. This liturgy just used the words demanding humility to refer to the Wesleyan covenant services of old. The truth is, though, humility is the doorway through which we walk to access all the kingdom of God. So, demanded by the liturgy, encouraged by your minister, or offered by any one of us sinners, it doesn't matter how, as much as that, it becomes our response to God's love. That humility becomes our response to God's love. According to the history offered in Wesley's journal, the covenant renewal service was held on various occasions throughout the year. By the end of his life, however, the service began to be observed, typically on the Sunday nearest January 1st, which is why we are experiencing it here today is this service, even on this day, is a practice that continues in churches around the world. In fact, I'm in a texting group of local Southeast Missouri Global Methodist pastors, and some of them were asking, are, are you all doing a covenant service this week? And some of them were. So we're not the only ones in this area going to be experiencing something similar to this. This service has undergone many revisions and adaptations over the years, including some by me this morning, for the purposes of communicating better at Zion. But its purpose as an evocative ceremony of commitment to ongoing discipleship and Christ-like character has always remained intact. Just as many generations have done this before us, today we make the covenant our own. 
renewing with both joy and sincerity the covenant that binds us all to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you search our hearts and you see every part of us. All our desires are known to you and from you no secrets are hidden. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, cleanse our hearts so that we may perfectly love you and glorify your holy name. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now as God's dearly loved children, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I said earlier, we are in the Christmas season. and It's an opportunity for us to sing some Christmas hymns we hadn't gotten to in the life of Zion. And the next two hymns that we're going to sing, which are Christmas-related, are also bookending the Nicene Creed. And I chose these hymns because they have some verses that have some creedal faith in them. If you'll pay attention to verses 2 and 6 of O Come All Ye Faithful, you'll hear some of the creed that we're going to recite after that. And then after the creed, when we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, verse 2 will have some of our creedal faith. John, uh, Charles Wesley wrote that hymn for us and exclu- uh, included some of our creedal faith in that. So it's an exciting understanding that uh, these hymns of the church, maybe you even hear them on the radio, and if you hear these verses on the radio, you hear the creeds of the church being mentioned too. Let's lift our voices, beginning with, O come all ye faithful.
stand and recite the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn. reasons these hymns of the church last and continue on is the, the theology that uh, Charles Wesley in that last hymn and that last stanza too before the chorus offered, um, born to raise us the sons of the earth, born to give us second birth. Jesus Christ was born that we might be born again. That quick knowledge, that quick understanding that rhymes from Charles Wesley that lasts to this day. It's pretty special stuff that we get to offer each Christmas. And as I said, even if it's on the radio, these words are proclaimed to the world uh, for this season of the year. Our Old Testament scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Ecclesiastes, probably the most 
well understood and, and remembered portion of this book be offered by our liturgist this morning, Greg Ehlers. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from the beginning to the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The beginning of that uh, scripture is very familiar to us. There's a season for everything. And we are in the season of Christmas, and it's a time for rejoicing. And that's why we're going to sing, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Let's lift our voices. Yesters would prepare themselves, we'll gather together God's tithes and our offerings, an opportunity we have each week to give back only a portion of what God has given to us. This past week, during the Christmas season, someone had a need, and we were able to turn their water back on and get them going for another month or so to give them help. And part of that is offered from what you do each week. We thank you for your continued uh, kind and cheerful giving, and may God continue to bless you as you give. remain standing, we'll offer the, the gospel lesson this morning. It comes from the last half of Matthew chapter 25. Again, this will be offered by our liturgist, Greg Ehlers. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, 
and he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place his sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when did you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me? Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick, in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Because we desire to be like those in the scripture that Greg just read, those who responded to others in need and not like those at the end of the story that Jesus gave us. Let us seek to live as true disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us also be honest about it, though. Sometimes we fall short. Therefore, let us take some time to examine ourselves before God this morning, humbly confessing our sins and submitting our hearts so that we do not deceive ourselves and cut ourselves away from the best of all that God has for us. Let us pray. The words on the screen. Father God, you have set forth the way of life through your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you love dearly. We shamefully confess that we have been slow to learn of him and have been reluctant to follow him. You have spoken and called to us, but we have not listened. You have revealed your beauty to us, but we have been blind. You have stretched out your hands to us through our friends, but we have passed by them. We have accepted your gifts and offered little thanks. We are unworthy of your changing love. We now confess to you our sins. Please forgive us for the poverty of our worship, for the selfishness of our prayers, for our inconsistency of unbelief, for the ways we neglect fellowship and your grace, for our hesitation to tell others about Christ, and for the ways we deceive others. Forgive us for when we waste time and when we misuse the gifts you have given us. Forgive us for when we have made excuses for the wrong things we have done and when we have purposefully avoided responsibility. Forgive us that we have been unwilling to overcome evil with good, and that we have not been ready to carry our own crosses. Forgive us that we have not allowed your love to work through us to help others, and that we have not made their suffering our own. Forgive us for those times when, instead of working for unity, we made it hard for others to live with us, because of our lack of forgiveness, inconsiderate judgment, and quick criticism. Forgive us for when we have not tried to reconcile with others and when we have been slow to seek redemption. 
God, the Father of us all, the Father of all mercies, is faithful to cleanse us from our sins and restore us to Christ's image. Praise and glory be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our next Christmas hymn is O Little Town of Bethlehem. And if you'll pay attention to the second half of the third verse and the first half of the fourth verse, you'll hear again some of these same things that we've just mentioned, confession and assurance, pardon and forgiveness of sins offered from the Lord on high. We'll be singing all four verses of this hymn. Let us, gathered here before the Lord, now in covenant commitment, commit ourselves to Christ as his servants. Let us give ourselves to him so that we may fully belong to him. Jesus Christ has left us with many services to be done. Some of these services are easy and honorable, but some are difficult and disgraceful. Some line up with our desires and interests. Others are contrary to both. And some we please both Christ and ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Jesus Christ, we offer you this prayer. Let me be your servant. Let me follow your commands. I will no longer follow my own desires. I give myself completely to your will. The power and strength to live as true servants is given to us in Christ. We Accept the place and work that he gives, acknowledging that he alone will be our reward. I am not my own. I am yours alone. Make me into what you will. Rank me with those you will. Put me to use for you. Put me to suffering for you. Let me be employed for you. Let me be laid aside for you. Let me be lifted high for you. Let me be brought low for you. Let me be full, or let me be empty. Let me have all things, or let me have nothing. With a willing heart, I freely give everything to your pleasure and disposal. 
Christ is Savior to those who are His true servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. To be His servant is to consent fully to His will. Christ accepts nothing less. Christ will be all in all or He will be nothing. Now confirm this truth and holy covenant. Make it a reality in your life in the following ways. I'm about to give you five ways in which the liturgy offers up. Something else I have done is to give you the covenant, some of the words you just said and a a few more that you haven't yet said is on the first side of that blue sheet in your bulletin. The first full version of the Wesleyan Covenant prayer is right there. On the back side are these five things that I'm about to list to you. Some of the words are a little different, but the Spirit is there for the most part. The inclination of this part of the service is to take these following ways to help you make this commitment. First, set apart time in your day to be spent alone with the Lord, perceiving His gracious acceptance of you. Carefully think through the the words of this covenant and its conditions. Examine your heart and name the sins in your life. Be honest about your willingness to submit to the Lord's authority, especially in those areas you just named. Second, uphold a serious spirit of holy awe and reverence for the Lord. Third, claim God's covenant, not by trusting in your own strength and power, but by relying upon God's promise of providing you grace and strength. He will empower you to keep your promise. Fourth, be determined to be faithful. You have given your heart and life to God. You have opened your mouth to dedicate yourself to the Lord. With God's power, never go back to your former way of living. And last, be prepared to renew your covenant with God. In your heart, by your attitude, and physically, when appropriate, willingly fall on your knees, lift your hands, and open your heart. Let's pray together. My righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me now as I spiritually lower myself before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness when I have not done your will. Thank you for your promise of mercy if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you rid yourself of every idol in your life. From the bottom of my heart, I here and now renounce every idol in my life, covenanting with you that I will not commit any known sin. By turning against your will, I have turned my love toward the world. In your power, I will keep watch for any temptation that will lead me away from you. Through Jesus Christ, God offers to be your God again, if you allow him to be your Lord. Before all heaven and earth, I here and now acknowledge you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as my Lord and God. I vow to give all of myself body and soul, to be your servant, and to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. Jesus Christ is the only way and means to God. God has given us Jesus as the way and means to salvation. Jesus, I here and now accept you as the only new and living way. I join myself in covenant with you. I come to you hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, and unworthy even to wash the feet of your servants. With all my power, I accept you as my Lord and it. Lord, my righteousness, I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. Jesus, I here and now make this covenant with you and accept whatever comes in my life. I promise that neither life nor death will separate you from you. God has given holy laws as the rule for your life. I here and now Willingly take on your yoke and burden. All your laws are holy 
just and good. I accept them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising I will strive to order my whole life around your direction. I will not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows you, even the thoughts of your heart. O oh God, you know you we have made this covenant today in sincerity, without deceit or reluctance. If you find anything false in us, guide us and help us to set it right. And now, glory be to you, God the Father. From this day forward, I shall look upon you as my God and Father. Glory be to you, God the Son. You have loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood. From this day forward, I shall look upon you as my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God, the Holy Spirit. By your almighty power, you have turned my heart from sin to God. From this day forward, I shall look upon you as my comforter and guide. O mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend. And I, through your infinite grace, have become your servant. You are mine, and I am yours. So be it. May this covenant I have made here on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. And with our covenants to the Christian life reaffirmed and this service nearly complete, let us sing our closing hymn. The words of this tune may be new to you. But what an appropriate hymn it is for this day. All glory be to Christ proclaims that indeed the Lord gets all the glory for what he does in our lives. And the hymn's proclamation is offered with the familiar Scottish tune for this time of year, Auld Lang Syne. The old English words of the tune of the, of the song, Auld Lang Syne, might literally be translated for the sake of old times. But we sing the tune for the sake of our Lord and covenant God. So let's stand as we conclude our covenant renewal service today and proclaim, all glory be to Christ.
And now here this dismissal with blessing, as you'll notice, has a line from you at the end. May our God, who establishes covenant relationship with those who seek to enter the kingdom, be with you always. May Jesus Christ, who seals the new covenant with his blood on the cross, bring you peace. May the Holy Spirit guide your life both now and forever. Now, go in peace to serve the Lord. Amen. Have a great week, everyone, and a happy new year.